all those who have actually moved up, please give yourself a hand. This next song uh, that I'm going to do is actually an original. I'm, I'm trying to do it in a different way. To, in a way that I actually haven't done before, so if you don't like it, then I didn't really write it. <laughs> but it's a song that's really personal to me in the sense that it, it actually took a lot of... Uh, I had to investigate and kind of explore some of the things that have happened in my life and kind of come to grips with a lot of the things that I had lost in my life. And if any of you know or have actually, actually have gone through a situation where you have lost I guess things that you've been fighting for with a lot of your energy, <laughs> then you know what it's like to actually lose it uh, in the sense that you, you you think that life is going to happen a certain way and when it doesn't, all you're left with is an uncertainty, which was what had happened in my life. And I learned that I had to be willing to look at uncertainty and realize that faith will only be born on the grounds of uncertainty. The song is called Faith in Life. Just because of 
Uh, some of the impractical things that God will have us do sometimes. You know, you may be in a place in your life where you feel like God is calling you to do something, but you're really reluctant because you just think it's impractical and it's against the norm and you don't know if anyone will believe in you. And I, When I hear this song, I think about Peter walking on water on how for everyone else, security was the boat. For everyone else, you know, so, you know, to go out and venture out into the unknown was, for their life actually depended on the fact that they stayed where it was comfortable. But for Peter, it's like there was there would be no other satisfaction if he did step out and be willing to look at impracticality and be willing to just lay it all down for the Lord. Um, and I kind of there have been times where God, I felt God was calling me to do certain things, and I realized that. I would rather go out there and, and and lay my life down for the Lord than live my life thinking about what only God, it's like that paradox, you know, that's in the Bible, you only will truly live when you are willing to lay down your life. When I hear this song about walking on water, I think about that and how if I had to do it all over again, I would, um, and do whatever it took to just, takes whatever it takes to follow my Lord.
Thanks, Dad. Uh, the next song I'm going to sing, I'm just going to talk a little bit about it and why we chose it. Um, I came to know God, um, uh, truly, truly know God, uh, summer of 06. And um, I, you know, I, I was raised in the church. Uh, my dad's actually a pastor. And um, we, he taught us and our parents raised us um, in the church. You know, every prayer meeting, we were there. Um, I'm the church leader in worship, like, like 10 or 11. And so I was on stage, just doing all these things, you know. Um, but um, I didn't really feel like I knew God, or I didn't know that I had to, or I thought this was it, you know, this is enough. Um, last year, um, we, um, there, was, there, was a, there was a pastor that came visit in our church, and a um, great man of God, um, and he had the gift of prophecy, and he had prophesied over my life, and he was telling me about certain things, and then the next day he did it again, and he was telling me different things. And so I was really confused because I wasn't sure. And he was telling me, uh, he was telling me things um, as regarding you know my future and like what to do at school and, and what path to take. And he was kind of reassuring things because it was a turning point in my life. And he said, okay, we'll do this. And the next day he said, okay, no, do this. And so I thought, God, what do I do? You know, like I mean, you know, I can't, I can't pursue both careers and I don't have enough time. You know, so um, so. I thank God for godly parents because I, I went to my parents and I was talking to them about it and what he said and what he had talked about and um, and I was like in tears because I was like I don't know what to do and you know I, I've been you know wasting like a year of school if I, if I don't you know pick now so um, so they said okay you know if, if, this, if that if, if God is speaking through that servant of God then that same spirit is in you and he can speak to you and I said all right so he's like so my parents told me you know go into your room and you sit and you pray and let God speak into you, into you. And I was like, all right, straight, so I'll do that. And so, um, so that's what I did. I went into my room, and I wasn't like, you know, um, you know, going home like, oh God, I need you. Or it was just, all I needed was, hey, am I gonna do, you know, pharmacy or speech pathology? That's, that's all I needed, you know? And those were my only options, that was my only request, and I needed that, and I'm out, you know? But um, God really took me to a whole different level. I sat down, and when I started to pray, the first verse that came to me was Matthew 6, 8. And I don't want to say, like, oh, God spoke to me, but I really felt like that verse was on my, on my heart. I turned to it, and it says, your father knows exactly what you need. And that really, really ministered to me because I felt like, you know, I'm here, here, here I am worrying about everything. Like, what am I, I going to do? Where am I going to go? How am I going to, you know, like, am I going to be here? Am I going to be in another state? You know, what's going to happen? And um, with no clue, and, and I, I felt like God was telling me, you know, lay it all at my feet and just worship me. And just give me your worship, and I'll, I'll lead you, and I'll take care of you, you know? Because I know exactly what you need, amen? I'm kind of quiet, amen? Okay, so um, so that's basically what happened. And so, and so those two days, I literally locked myself up in my room. I uh, didn't eat, I didn't do anything, I went to the restroom, but there was occasional breaks. But, um, you know, I did nothing else. I, I didn't see my parents or anybody for two whole days. And I just sat there in the presence of God, and I totally just weeped in the presence of God because I, I realized, you know, um, like, I realized who God was, and I realized who I was, and where, you know, I, I really, God gave me a, a sense of perspective, you know, as to what, you know, who we are in Him. And um, so I started to read the Gospels, and I started to see Jesus as this real person, you know, that loved people, and He taught, and He came here to save, and, and He was just so real, and so, like, loving, and, you know, we grew up in church learning, you know, you do something wrong, and you're going straight to hell, you know? Um, we have our certain rules and regulations, and that's what I live by, and, you know, if you break any of those rules, that's it, it's over. Um, but, you know, I came to know God as loving, and, like, as merciful, and, you know, as God that's so real, you know, He became so, so real to me. And, um, and I believe that God, that's God's agenda for all of us. I really believe that he wants to reveal yourself, reveal himself to you. And um, I just pray that, you know, this next song is it's, um, Lead Me to the Cross. And that was my prayer every single day. God, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't an easy year, easy year. You know, like I just found out maybe like a couple months ago actually what I'm going to be doing. So, um, so I trusted God and it's, you know, he really gave me the strength to do that. And I really, you know, it's my, that's my prayer for my youth and my church. And, and here it's just like, I really pray that God will make himself so real in your life. He's so real. A God that we can turn to at any point. And, you know, the cry of my heart, the prayer of my heart is that God, you know, lead me to the cross every single day, you know, every moment of my life. Because it's not just, you know, oh, we're, we're saved and we're going to, no, it's every single day laying down your life and then really following and choosing to follow Christ. 
So I just pray that as we sing this song, just um, listen to the words and really feel um, what God is, God is ministering to you.
break and um, for, two, uh, for a quick update on the PCNAG conference, uh, Atlanta 2008 conference, I would like to introduce the local coordinator, uh, Brother Tommy Abraham, who'll come forward and give us a little update. Um, as far as, as most of you know, our uh, previous secretary, Brother Bino, is our national youth coordinator for the Atlanta conference. And um, this team has, an, has done an excellent job already. It's been only a month since they took over and they've already established their website. How many of you have seen the new PCNAC site? PCNAC Youth. Take a look at it, pcnacyouth.com. They've added a, a lot of new features to it and uh, PCNAC Radio and all those new features they've added to the site. Take a look at it. And they already assigned the people responsible for various areas and um, they're well on their way to, the, uh, to a good conference. I'd like to introduce the local youth coordinator from Atlanta, uh, Brother Tommy Abraham. 